Hello YouTubers, welcome to another episode of 5 Minute Revelation Study. Now, last time we were just looking at the idea of the rapture uh, and how it fitted in with the second coming. You know. I thought it might be worth just taking another look at Matthew 24, which is the class, one of the classic rapture texts. Uh, Matthew 24, I think it's Mark 13 or 14, and Luke chapter 17. So, let's have a quick look at this idea of the rapture. In Matthew 24, I'm just going to read um, from verse 36 to 41. And note that, how, that the context of the passage, when you get to the bit about the, the rapture, note the context of this passage. Okay? So in verse 36, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So this is talking about the second coming of Jesus. Right? But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So the parallel event here is the um, Noah's flood. Right? So in verses 37 and 39 we hear about Noah's flood. So what happened in the Noah's flood? But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days of before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. Did you hear that? The flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. There will be two men in the field. One will be taken away. And the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken away, and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. So, have you ever seen that before? One of the most important hermeneutical principles of, of any text, when you look at it, is the context in which it is written. So people see, yeah, it is... Um, one field worker, one man in the field, he gets taken away, yay, he gets raptured. No, no. Because the whole context of the passage is that of the second coming is like Noah's, Noah's flood. The one that's carried away by the flood, that's taken away, is the same as the one in field work that gets taken away. That's not a good thing. But one is left to remain in the field, to work the field. The righteous, the meek, will inherit the earth. Okay. Now in verse 41, there's, a, there's two women grinding um, corn. And uh, so the one is taken away and the one is left. See the same, the same parallel there. The, one, the Noah's flood took away a lot of the wicked, the man in the field. One man is taken away, one woman grinding the mill, taken away. And the ones who are left with are the believers. They're the ones who actually inherit the earth. In Luke 17, the disciples actually ask Jesus the question, uh, where? So he says, one will, be one will be in the field, one taken away, one left. Two women grinding at the, uh, the, court, at the, at the mill, one taken away, the other left. The disciples ask him, where? They're obviously not asking where the ones who are left behind were left behind. That's obvious. They're asking, where are the ones that are taken to that have been taken away? Where, where did they go? And the answer is, wherever the dead bodies are, there the vultures will gather. So to be taken away in, in that regard, like here and here, that's a very bad thing, because you're taken away to the place of the dead. Yeah. So, yeah, an interesting study. So you should have a look at those three texts. And uh, just see that. Look at the context. The context really helps you to interpret the passage correctly. So there will be a rapture at the second coming. When the, the last trumpet, when the dead are raised, and we are who are alive on earth are, are, go up to join the Lord in the air. So that's not to be confused by the one taken away, by the ones in the Noah's flood taken away. They were not raptured to be with the Lord. They were judged and removed from God's good earth. I hope this uh, has given you some food for thought. 
God bless you as we continue our study. Bye.